In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to use Blender to make this image that looks like text carved out of a sphere. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.66. Before we start, let's make sure that you have the Cycles Render Engine. To check this, come over here to this drop-down menu and verify that one of the selections is Cycles Render. If you don't have it, then you can go to blender.org to download the latest version of Blender. Let's start by creating a new project. So go to the File menu and select New, and then click on Reload Startup File. I'm going to start by expanding this section on the right by dragging the edge. Just in case you're brand new to Blender, I'll quickly cover a few basics. If you want to select an object, then click your right mouse button on it. For example, this is the camera and I can select it by right-clicking on it. Then to select the cube, just right-click on it. To rotate the view, press and hold the middle mouse button while you drag the mouse. If you press and hold the shift key and then press and hold the middle mouse button, you can pan the view. You can also zoom by using the scroll wheel on your mouse. The default scene starts with a single cube object. We don't need the cube, so we're going to delete it. To do that, right-click on the cube to make sure that it's selected, then type X on your keyboard, and then select Delete. Now we're going to add some text. In Blender, when you add text, as well as other objects, it will be added at the location of the 3D cursor. This symbol right here is the 3D cursor. So to add the text, click on the Add menu and select Text. Let's zoom in to see this better. Remember, to zoom in, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse. This text is lying down flat, but we need it to be standing up. So press the R key on your keyboard to rotate the text. When you move your mouse, you'll see it rotate. Now press the X key and it will restrict the rotation to the X axis. Now if I wanted, I could just use my mouse to rotate the object to the desired position and then press the left mouse button to complete the operation. Or if you know how much you want to rotate the object, then you can just type in a value directly. In this case, I know I want to rotate the text by 90 degrees, so I'm just going to type in 90 and then press the Enter key. Now to change this text into a different word, we need to be in Edit Mode. So come down here and click on this menu and select Edit Mode. You can see that a cursor was added at the end of the text. So I'm going to press the backspace key several times and then type Carve. Then return to Object Mode by clicking here and then select Object Mode. Next we're going to add some depth to the text. So come over here and press the button with the F on it. Down here in the Geometry section, there is an entry box where you can enter an extrude value. Set this to a value of 1. Here you can see that depth has now been added to the text. The next thing that we need to do is to convert this text into a mesh. To do that, click on the Object menu and select Convert To, and then Mesh from Curve Meta Serve Text. We're finished with the text for now, so let's add a cylinder. So from the Add menu, select Mesh, and then Cylinder. Over here on the left, there is an entry box for vertices. Set this to a value of 64. This will add some extra detail to the cylinder. Next, press the R key to rotate the cylinder. Then press the Y key to restrict the rotation to the Y axis. Then type 90, followed by the Enter key. To get a better view of what we're doing, I'm going to switch to Front View. To do that, click on the View menu and select Front. Now we're going to scale the cylinder, so press the S key. Then type 0.5 followed by the Enter key. Then press the S key to scale it again. Then press the X key to restrict the scale operation to the X axis. Then type 5 followed by the Enter key. The view is currently in perspective mode, and I'm going to change it to orthographic mode. To do that, come down here to the View menu and select View Perspective Orthographic. Next, grab the red arrow and drag the cylinder until the text is centered. 
Then do the same with the blue arrow. What's important here is that the cylinder is a little taller than the text. We're going to turn this cylinder into a tool which we will use later to carve out a portion of a sphere. So we're going to add some sharp edges to it. To do that, we need to be in edit mode. So click down here and then select edit mode. Over here on the left, click the loop cut and slide button and then position your cursor over the cylinder. You should now see a purple line in the center. This lets me divide the cylinder into smaller pieces. We're going to divide it 40 times, so type 40 followed by the Enter key. Now come down here and click on the Select menu, and then select Random. This will randomly select some of the vertices. Next, press the S key to scale and type 1.2 followed by the Enter key. This will only scale the vertices that are selected. We're done with edit mode now, so return to object mode by clicking down here and select object mode. Now if we rotate the view, you can see the sharp edges that we've added to the cylinder. Remember to rotate the view, press and hold the middle mouse button while you drag the mouse. We won't be using this cylinder until a little later, so for now, move it out of the way. So grab this green arrow and pull it straight back. Next we're going to add a sphere. So from the Add menu, select Mesh and then UV Sphere. Now let's increase the size of the sphere. So press the S key to scale and then type 1.5 followed by the Enter key. Now grab the green arrow and drag it back until you can see the front of the text. Then from the View menu, select Front. Then grab the red arrow and move the sphere until the text is centered. Then grab the blue arrow and do the same. Now switch to Right Side View. So from the View menu, select Right. Make sure that the front of the text extends a little bit outside the edge of the sphere. Next, we're going to increase the detail of the sphere. So come over here to the right and click on the Object Modifiers button that looks like a wrench. Then click on Add Modifier and select Subdivision Surface. Down here, set both the View and Render values to 2. Then click on the Apply button. Now we're going to trim off the front edge of the text so that it will be even with the outside of the sphere. So right-click on the text to select it, then click on the Object Modifiers button if it is not already selected, then click Add Modifier, and select Boolean. Make sure that the Operation value is set to Intersect, then click in this entry box and select Sphere. Then click the Apply button. Now if I grab the green arrow and move the text over a little, you can see that the front of the text was trimmed off to match the shape of the sphere. We need the text to be even with the outside of the sphere, so I need to put the text back by undoing my previous operation. So to undo an operation, just press Ctrl Z. Now we're going to cut a piece out of the sphere using the cylinder. So right click on the cylinder to select it, then grab the green arrow and position it over the edge of the sphere. Next, right-click on the sphere to select it, click the Add Modifier button, and select Boolean. Set the Operation value to Difference, then click in this entry box and select Cylinder. Then press the Apply button. This will give us an object that is the difference between the shape of the sphere and the shape of the cylinder. To see this, Right-click on the cylinder to select it. Grab the blue arrow and move the cylinder out of the way. I'll rotate the view to give you a better look. We don't need the cylinder anymore, so press the X key and then click Delete. Let's also zoom in a little. Now we're going to smooth out the surface of the sphere. So right-click on it to select it, then come over to the left and click on the Smooth button. 
You'll notice that it made the surface of the sphere smooth, but it also made the edges of the carved out section smooth as well. To prevent it from smoothing the carved edges, we can add an edge split modifier. To do that, click the Add Modifier button and select Edge Split. Then make sure that the checkbox next to Edge Angle is checked and that the split angle value is set to 30. With this setting, the angles greater than 30 degrees will not be smoothed. Now we're going to smooth the text. So right click on it to select it, then click on the Smooth button. You'll notice that Blender smoothed the edges on the front edge of the text, so we're going to add the Edge Split modifier again to the text. So click on the Add Modifier button and select Edge Split. And again, make sure that the checkbox next to Edge Angle is checked and that the Split Angle value is set to 30. Next, we're going to set the material for the text. So click on the Material button right here and then click on the New button. Materials are selected differently when using the Blender Render Engine as compared with the Cycles Render Engine. We want to use the Cycles Render Engine, so come up here and click on this menu and then select Cycles Render. Now click the Use Nodes button. The default material is set to Diffuse, so we'll keep this setting. To change the color, click in this white area and then grab this little circle and drag it to the color that you want to use. I'm going to use a yellow color. We're going to use this material again, so let's give it a name. So click here and then type the name. I'll just call this yellow. Now let's set the material for the sphere. So right click on it to select it. Then click this little button on the left side of the new button and select yellow. This is how you select a material that you've already defined. Now we're ready to add a light source. So start by zooming out, then from the Add menu, select Mesh, and then Plane. Then press the S key to scale, and type 3 followed by the Enter key. Then grab the blue arrow and pull it up. Now press the R key to rotate, and then press X to restrict the rotation to the X axis. Then type 45 followed by the Enter key. Now switch to the right side view. So from the view menu, select right. Now grab the green arrow and move the plane to the left. This will let the light source shine on the top and the front of the sphere. Now switch to the front view. So from the view menu, select front. Then grab the red arrow and center the plane over the sphere. Next, we're going to set the material for the light source, so click on the New button. Then click here and select Emission. This material emits light. The Strength value sets the strength of the light source. Set this value to 15. Now use the scroll wheel and zoom in. The next thing we're going to do is to rotate the text and sphere a little. So right-click on the text to select it. Then hold down the Shift key and right-click on the sphere. Holding down the Shift key allows you to select multiple objects at once. Now press the R key to rotate and then move the mouse to rotate the object a little. When you're done rotating, press the left mouse button. Now let's set up the camera view. Start by going to the View menu and select Camera. This is the view looking through the camera. What you see looking through the camera is what will be rendered. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. If you want to be able to rotate and pan the view while looking through the camera, then we need to make a change to the view properties. To do this, click on the View menu and select Properties. Then over here on the right, click the box next to Lock Camera to View. Then to hide this menu, click on the View menu and select Properties again. Now you can rotate, zoom, and pan the view while looking through the camera. So now I'm going to position the view to the view that I want to render. Remember, to rotate the view, press and hold the middle mouse button while you move the mouse. Use the scroll wheel to zoom. And to pan the view, hold down the shift key 
and then press and hold the middle mouse button while moving the mouse. When we render the image, the default color for the background will be a gray color. To change that, click on the World button. Then click in this gray area to select a new color. I'm going to pull this up to lighten the colors. Then I'm going to set this to a blue color. Now we're ready to render the image, but I'm going to save the project first. It's a good idea to save your project before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. So from the File menu, select Save As. Here you can specify a directory, and this is the file name. I'm going to name this Carve.Blend. Blend is the extension that Blender uses. Then click the Save As Blender File button. Now click on the Render button that looks like a camera. For now, keep all of the default values and just press the Render button. This is a quick render that isn't rendered with very many samples, so it will look grainy, but it's a good way to take a quick look at what we have so far. If you want to switch between this rendered image and the previous view, click on this menu down here. If you select 3D View, it will take you back to the previous view. To return to the rendered image, select UV Image Editor. Well, everything looks okay with this image now, so we're ready to render the final image with more samples. So come down here and open the section called Sampling. In some older versions of Blender, this section is called Integrator. You can see over here that the number of render samples is currently set to 10. I'm going to change this to 1000. The larger this number is, the better the final image will look, but the longer it will take to render. Now let's render the final image. So come back up here and click on the Render button. If you want to abort the rendering before it's finished, then press the Escape key. This image is going to take a while to render, so I'm going to pause the video until it's done. Rendering is finished, and now we have our final image. To save the image, put your cursor over the image and press the F3 key. You can specify a directory here and a file name here. I'm going to name this image carve.png. Then press the Save as Image button. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.